Hi folks, welcome back to the channel, thank you very much for joining me, you are always most welcome. Well, today we're going to have part two of my uh, review, if you like, or appreciation of the uh, Legacy, part two, book by Mr Spencer Pollard, who's our uh, great friend and uh, very, very impressive, world-class modeler, probably one of the best models in the UK, if we're honest about it. So, uh, he's produced uh, this, uh, he went, mentioned that in the first episode, he mentioned that in his book that he was going to, uh, during lockdown he was furloughed from work and he had all this time in his hands and he decided to use his time wisely and he created this tribute to the Francois Verlinden, the Belgian modeler who was very famous in the 60s and 70s, uh, a tribute to his work. And the Linden uh, would have these dioramas. This is not quite the Linden standard, obviously, not just my poor efforts, but he would have these um, armor uh, dioramas, and they would be surrounded by figures that really animated the scene. And he would also, you know, build it all into a diorama with buildings and all sorts of other elements that just created almost a photographic uh, quality image of uh, some model kits that are brought together with very, very clever lighting techniques, very, very clever finishing techniques, and a lot of work, you know, additional items and elements are brought into them to make it look like a real scene, as if you were standing there. And of course, he was brilliant, this guy, Valendon, and uh, Spencer Pollard, our good friend, he's um, a big fan of his, uh, as, a, as am I, but he's a real big fan of Valendon, and he's, he's made these two books for us to enjoy, I'll talk more about the book, uh, how to get hold of the book at the end. You, you can't buy it on the open market. You need to go to Spencer himself. So rather than give his details out, I don't think he'd appreciate that. So I think what we'll do is at the end, if, uh, if anybody wants to contact me directly with a message, I can pass on to you uh, via email. We'll, we'll pass on the contact details so you can get hold of Spencer and you can perhaps, because he's, he's no longer printing them anymore so these are going to be out of print if not already they are I think they are out of print already but there are some I think still available so whether you want one or both of them it's all up to you let's get started and have a look at what we've got in here so this is uh, number two uh, part two of two the concluding chapter of the legacy now we've got some uh, we've got some American armor here we've got another wonderful scene there it's still the bag on this one and then we've got an Abrams, looks like it's probably going to be, is it an Abrams? Yes, an Abrams, A1 Abrams, that's going to be in Iraq. So we're going to very carefully, as I mentioned, this is actually a, I've actually purchased these not simply to review them, they're actually bought as a gift for somebody. So I'm hoping he's not watching, but if he is, well, he knows that he's getting for Christmas. <laughs> but, um, yeah, they're not, they're not super cheap, they're not like a magazine, they're, you, know, you have to bear in mind that Spencer's put a lot of work into these books and I thought they were very good value in fairness, but they are a bit special and uh, you will need to, uh, I won't quote the price, uh, but if you contact him it's, it's very reasonable, I would say it's very reasonable. Now, let's have a look. This one actually seems a bit thicker than the part one, so I think we're going to get even more fun in here. Um, so, let's have a look what we got. Oh yes, oh yes, we've got a lot of other elements. We've got some Soviet stuff, some uh, uh, Arab uh, desert type scenarios here. And he basically says, um, again, he repeats this story about and decided to do this because he was at a loose end in the pandemic. Um, and uh, he does appear on another channel. Um, I'm sure most of you know which one that is. Uh, and uh, you can see him occasionally on that channel on YouTube and he talks about how to spend his time and he's uh, thinking that you know he enjoyed the Valinden uh, art if that's the right word I think it probably is uh, the way he brought you know art into dioramas in a way that nobody's quite done before and he wants to emulate that as a bit of a trivia and that's what he's done with these books so here we go passing through this is the uh, Enfield Sherman uh, which is beautifully laden up with all sorts of goodies on the back. It's got, it <laughs> started to remind me of the Telesavalis in uh, Battle of the Bulls, you might remember. He used to loot a lot of uh, goods and chickens and 
alcoholic beverages and sell them on, a bit like a black market situation. Uh, <laughs> just remind me of that actually when you see all that stuff on the back. But let's have a look what, uh, what Spencer is going to do here. So, again, a very simple kit. It's the uh, N4A3 Sherman. 135th scale from Tamiar again, very affordable kit. Set you back about, oh, he says here, £28.50. So it's a little bit dearer than some of us have seen, but very reasonable at the price. Got some nice figures in it, which I think he's obtained separately. And he says, I love this kit. As a younger model, I built it a number of times, enjoying how quickly it could be assembled and painted. Little more than a day needed on the way to the fun stuff, camouflage and weathering. Now, it's interesting he says that. Um, I agree with that. Um, the models often debate about which do you enjoy most. most. Are we just assemblers or are we builders? Well, that, that, I think there's a lot of bad modelling companies, a lot of bad manufacturers still today are getting away with murder almost, um, metaphorically speaking, because they are just producing garbage and saying, well, you know, if you're a modeller, you can get around it. Well, that's not really good enough. Personally, my own view is that we should be... We should have a quality product like you get here with Tamiya, for example, and a lot of others are good now as well. But I want to get that built as quickly as possible, and then exactly like Spencer suggested, just get the basic kit built. I don't want to fight it, I'm not interested. No, I'm not going to do that anymore, I've just decided I've passed that now. I don't want to fight a kit, I want a nice kit that goes together. I don't know if it's absolutely perfect, but it should go to, but together basically competently. And then I want to spend my time doing the weathering, the detailing, and the adding, adding your own personalisation, especially when you're doing dioramas, of course. So that's really what it should all be about, I think. I don't think we, you know, it's the 22nd year, the 21st century. We shouldn't be fighting kits anymore. They should be good enough that they go together properly. Um, it, it's, it's just an excuse to bad manufacturers. But if you want to fight old kits, I mean, you can always get an old classic Airfix or a Frog or whatever. That's fine. But I don't think modern kits should be battled with just to get them to go together. I think we should spend our time making them interesting, uh, adding individualisation and differentiating them from, from other people's version. Anyway, enough of my waffle, back to Spencer's book. I'll see what you make of this. This is very interesting. He says here, because I'm just trying to see which uh, figures he's got. Where are the figures from? <laughs> just bear with me because I'm sure. I don't think they're Tamiya. Uh, Normandy Bridgehead. He, he, he actually is taking inspiration from a from a Verlinden diorama that was called Breakout from the Normandy Bridgehead, and it's in the Verlinden Way, Way Volume Two Military Models. So, where are these where are these figures from? Just didn't think that they were actually included in the kit. I could be completely wrong. Hmm, maybe I am wrong, maybe they are included. Uh, maybe we'll get to that in a second. Anyway, you can see he's built up the, you know, his under basic kit here and he's already started adding detail. Uh, this Telesavalis type um, bounty or booty, shall we say, uh, that's been hung around the tank and it says here, um, Okay, as a tip of the hat to the VP range, Villinden Products, I've just realised what VP stands for, Villinden Products range. The crew in this model all came from the Villinden Products range. There you go. Uh, the tank commander, they nevertheless looked at home with the hatches of the model. Although they do look a bit grumpy, so... <laughs> okay, and then he's saying about um, the right hand side of the turret reveals its secrets and he's got all these like guide rails some of which I think he's scratch built um, we've got the accessories which is all the weapons um, which are and we've also got the allied vehicle accessory set so that includes oil drums and uh, tarpaulins and all sorts of goodies and he talks about the Volume 2 book, which he's basing his ideas on. Tells you about his various uh, paints and how, how he's building up for a base coat. Vehicle base coat, cloudy overspray, vehicle tyres, tarps, bread rolls and kit bags. Uh, the bread rolls are the little bags. Helmets and other details and all the different colours he used. 
Now we're getting into how to make it into a diorama and going past this garage. He says, in terms of design, my not so little barn includes many of the features that defined those old building kits, plaster work, areas of broken brick, stonework, large doors, and the impression of a cellar door, something that was stolen wholesale from one of the London products early kits. When he says stolen, he means he's recreated it. I don't think he means literally stolen. <laughs> Now here he goes, this is how he's in layers, he's building up um, this this building. It's even got round the back a little stream with a boat. You see that in the middle, the top picture? And then we've got how he's building up the roofing, uh, he's creating the basic effect of the doors, doing the initial painting, and then the fun part. It's, it's a little, he calls it a little dock where the boat is little dock with a rowing boat he said it's something I wanted to add uh, and do this something like this for a while the water features being a regular inclusion in many of Francois's mid-period dioramas and it does look very real I'm going to zoom in for this Just look at this dock look at the water effect isn't it real that's really really good then you've got all these um, abandoned items and jerry cans and things lying at the side of the road um, and he's yeah, he's basically just saying it's all about positioning, it's about lighting, and it's about the uh, the tonal effects. You know, I mean, it's art, isn't it? For me, this is kind of it's going beyond model making. We're going into proper art artwork now because you are you're almost painting a scene with plastic kits and a lot of paint. Um, now he's talking about the next one is the armoured recovery vehicle which is based on the T-34 uh, and this is quite interesting, something different I mean, it's basically a T-34 with no turret on the top uh, that can carry, you know, it's for towing tanks and it's for carrying all sorts of spares and tree trunks and ammo, oil, fuel, etc, etc and he's, built, he's building this up from a, a simple Tamiya T-34 kit now I, I have to confess my T-34 T-34 that many of you have seen, which is in white winter camo, is actually the ICM kit, which is a really nice kit. But I'm sure this old Tamiya kit's pretty decent. And it's, it says, it's, this is basically, you know, model conversion techniques. The kit price is about £18. It's, again, pocket money. If you've never attempted a conversion before, this one will very be very easy to tackle. If you've cut plastic card, dealing with straight edges, engrave a few lines here and there, and then glue some simple parts together accurately, you'll be absolutely fine. Well, there we go. And then he demonstrates it here, showing various little pieces he's adding, storage boxes. Um, obviously, he's working on uh, the, the storage area. Now, how's he, how's he achieved that? Drum, 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 three. Let's have a little three. Conversion parts are all assembled and ready to paint. A beginner should be able to tackle the scratch built sections needing no more than plastic cards, some rod and strip and a few basic tools. Well, well, well. Is that how he's actually got the the crate? If that's the right word. Oh, the, um, it's like the back of a tow truck, isn't it? Is that, is that where he got it from? I wonder if he pinched that from the other kit that he was working on. Where it showed. No. no it's just... I wondered if he'd actually used the back of the uh, Allied truck. He hasn't. I think he's just built it from scratch by the look of it. Um, look at the effect. Uh, you've got spare wheels in there, tarpaulins, wood, tools, spades, fuel can, you name it. This is a very important aspect when it comes to armour modelling. It needs to create. As, um, as much as interest as you possibly can. It may be accurate to have all similar items in the same colours, but it doesn't create a very interesting model. So he's, again, it's talking about tonal range and differentiating, you know, two or three spades, for example, making them all look slightly different. So, yeah. <laughs> look at this. He's actually used the T-34's turret here in the foreground, just below my thumb you know, as, as a, a part of the diorama where it's been blown up another tank. And it is, of course, from this tank. That's, that's been done. 
Then he's going to do a Winter Warrior, which is the T3476. This is the Tamiya one again. And that's very much painted in a style, albeit much better than mine, but painted the similar sort of winter camo style. And again, here he's talking about adding detail, adding the handrails. Um, I think they've got like smoke dischargers, are they? Pom 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 pom. What is it? What is it? What is it? Looks like a smoke discharger rail. Grab handles on the turret, and he's talking about pre shading and etc. But this one is the Bedouin's prize. So the Bedouin with his camel has just found a German 88 millimeter <laughs> gun, which is uh, quite a find in the desert. And again, he's using the famous Tamiyar 88 millimeter 36 stroke 37 flak cannon. And here we're getting into some very interesting effects with stonework. So he's saying, mm, the rock top was carved from pieces of styrofoam, and then a taller section was added, like a dry stone wall, from small pieces glued one on top of the other. So he's actually he's almost made a, a real dry stone wall here from bits of styrofoam. The look of it, that's impressive. I like the camel as well. That camel looks really good. <laughs> wow. And again, using some of the other techniques we've already seen. You've got your camel here. Heavily laden camel. Huh. Amazing. And now, Cold War warrior. We're into modern, more modern stuff now from the Cold War. British Army chieftain tank. I say British Army. Is it Britain? Or is it... Do they look British, those chaps? I think they do. British, British Chieftain Mark V. Again, you can pick this up for £20 in the shops, and I've seen that from Tamiya. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't normally do Cold War stuff. Look at the effect of where they've got the, um, the netting. Isn't that wonderful? Let's see if I can get this a bit closer for you. That netting effect is absolutely superb. It really is. Look at that. In these days of kits with a parts count in the hundreds and thousands, seeing one so simple and its breakdown is certainly very welcome. <laughs> yeah, nobody means exactly. I'm not a fan of these kits though. I seem to have parts for the sake of parts. Or does it create problems and joins and things? Mm. So they use a short length of picture hanging wire as the tow cable. The netting, where's he got the netting from? I'm just trying to figure out what, what he's used for that because it looks incredible. It really does look amazing, that netting. The most distinctive part of this model is the camouflage netting. Described in the text, very simple addition. Tipped its hat to the Villinden Way and the models that I built as a far younger model. In terms of the basics, the netting that you see here was created using some VP camouflage netting cut into squares soaked in PVA and then just draped into place. If you don't have any of that you can also use surgical bandage which is almost identical. With the netting in place you can texture it with tea leaves held in place with a few more drops of PVA. Tea leaves, good lord. <laughs> Brilliant. Everything should be left to dry out, the result being rock hard netting that can be painted and weathered with ease. In the shot you'll see many of the accessories that were grabbed, cleaned and then dropped into the stowage bins. At this point they are only in there for the image. Each being painted separately and then fixed in place during the final assembly. Wow, that's incredible. It looks so nice. Look at the final picture. It's so nice, isn't it? El Capone. Incredible. Without the skirts, the Chieftain has a very rakish look. I think it looks looks really purposeful. Not only that, the detail of the Tamiya around the wheels and suspension can be appreciated. It is nice, isn't it? Something impossible to see with the skirts in place. So he's gone without the skirts, has he? Does he put them on later? We'll see. Now you can see that he's building up the different tones and colours, spraying it up. Now he's doing some dry brushing and weathering 
Looks like it's been on Salisbury Plain, there's quite a lot of dirt and sand, general grime. Now he's sort of bringing it all together near the end. And these figures look really excellent as well, I must say. Did you say where you got them? The crew figures and some red exercise plates complete the turret. The figures were painted in acrylics, Vallejo colours being used to create the finish that's seen here. They look good, don't they? Wow. Amazing. And then we've got the Pink Panther, which is of course the, de uh, the Desert SAS Long Range Group. Uh, and that again is another um, Tamiya kit. So again, it's all very cheap stuff, very affordable. <laughs> Pink Panther. It's a strange colour, isn't it? You, you think that doesn't look like sand, but of course it does. It does when it's actually on the sand. Uh, SAS Land Rover Pink Panther, there we go. £12 only in the UK. So another one you can probably pick up from either your local model shop or Hobbycraft. And he's done a lot of... Uh, Additions on this one, netting, water carrier bags and things on the side. And then number seven, a commanding present. So this was, uh, he says, I think that during my first day with Francois I noticed this model on the shelf in his workshop. Dusty and seemingly forgotten, it looked as though it needed some TLC. Hmm. So he actually spent some time with Francois Valendon personally. Um, yeah, that's really quite something, isn't it? Actually, what a privilege, huh? <laughs> so, again, we've got a really beautiful diorama created here with signage. We've got lichen and moss growing on the wall and on the pillar. Uh, grass on the ground. Very, very authentic looking manner it's been done. And then finally we've got the Abrams, this is the uh, M1 Abrams 2015 kit and he's added lots of extras again, lots of tarps, goodies on the back, ammo boxes, water carriers, you name it. And again it's quite a, a cheap kit, I think it's about £25 that kit if I remember. Uh, and he actually finishes it off with... Watchers of the Sky, so it's an anti-aircraft flak battery in Germany and again looks like it's in the middle of winter, you've got snow this time on the walls, brilliantly done and he talks about that. So there we have it, there we have it. Um, I think for the armour models amongst you you're probably salivating looking at some of these images because it's so well done isn't it? So well done. We pop this back because, as I say, it's actually a gift from somebody. Showing me a share of the whole world. So. I hope it doesn't mean it's second hand. <laughs> ah! Come on. There we go. Comes in these beautiful resealable bags, which uh, Spencer always uses, which is really nice. So, what did you think? I think that was really awesome, and uh, I don't know whether it's my imagination, but the lighting and the, the photos in that one seem better to me. I think I'd probably give that 10 out of 10. Yep. Um, it's so helpful to see these reimagined concepts, and uh, you know, they are being modernised using modern techniques in some ways. As I said before, Spencer's skills are well beyond mine forever I'm sure but that should not put any of us off um, and there are lots of tips and tricks you can copy uh, things you can try ideas different ways of creating light and tones uh, and he talked about this recently I saw him on, uh, on YouTube and he was talking about um, I think it was the uh, Archer uh, the anti-tank gun British anti-tank gun uh, mobile anti-tank gun uh, and he was saying that he's it de designed um, another one where it's going through, trying to punch through a, a gate with pillars either side of it. And again, you've got all these effects with lichen and moss and water had run down and dirt and things. Beautifully done. But he said he designed the model to be seen and lit from, seen from one angle and lit from another angle. And if you turn it another way, it's still very nice looking diorama, but it doesn't quite have the same impact. So you have to bear in mind, he talks about this in the books, 
how are you going to display the model where is it going to be seen from where is it going to be lit from because sometimes that can have an impact you know sometimes you see a fantastic model you take it off and put it on a shelf in the cabinet it doesn't quite look as spectacular and that's probably because the lighting is different and the angle you're looking at it is different so he, he talks about considering all these things in his books um, and I would recommend them to you very strongly indeed now I say they're out of print I believe if you want to get into if any of you are interested in getting your hands on these uh, I promise you they're not unreasonably priced uh, and any armor modeler would probably be very interested or certainly consider getting those um, photography is beautiful please get in touch with me and I'll pass your details on or we'll give you the details you need uh, I don't want to sort of advertise these details that wouldn't be fair and I don't appreciate that so but I'm sure there's a way we can put you in touch with him and you can get perhaps some of these books yourselves if you would like them very reasonably priced as I say and well worth the money well worth the money so 10 out of 10 for the volume 2 hope you'll give me a 10 out of 10 with a thumbs up please remember to smash that like button <laughs> and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already if you have subscribed already, please uh, remember that you need to ding the notification bell to get instant early warning of any upcoming video that is in the works and on the way. Uh, anyway, that's it from me for now. hope you enjoyed them and found them really interesting. I think there's some magnificent work there. Uh, and the fact that he's done the books as well, it's just candy for your eyes. It's great stuff. Anybody that loves armour modelling is going to have a great time reading these. Uh, and you'll learn a lot. And uh, I'm sure the person that's getting this will learn a lot too. So there we go. Anyway, I um, hope you didn't mind my fairly average armour collection. There's a couple of examples here. Uh, looks a bit poor, doesn't it, unfortunately, after we looked at that book. But a bit average. But, you know, I like them. I like them. They, they, like I said before, they, they add a character and bring a... They bring a... Um, an animation to your armour models no longer is it just a tank on a shelf it's suddenly it's a scene and of course Spencer and Francois Verlinden have taken these this, uh, this concept of having a scene and a diorama to a whole new level and if we only get a little bit of benefit from that and improve our skills all of us then I think it's been a worthwhile exercise anyway that's enough from me thanks very much for watching I uh, hope you'll all uh, tune in again in the not too distant future in the meantime Take care of yourselves. Thank you very much for watching and bye for now.